Hey folks, Engineer 775 on site at an undisclosed location. We are installing a Solark 8K inverter and pretty excited to do so, other than it's 95 degrees. Uh, but we are trenching, digging holes for a Schleder ground mount, and I'll take you around. We're just kind of staging our materials here now, and let me show you what we're up to. Okay, so we're going to be, this house is going to be run off of uh, the Solark 8K. We're going through some of the breakers. Very old house. Got some really 1950 panels and so we gotta upgrade a few things to, in order for this to work. So we're gonna basically come in here and the inverter is gonna be in this room inside with batteries. I'm not gonna take you in there yet because I'm too dirty. And then uh, we're gonna drop in some lines for future expansion of solar. So we're getting our trenches in and we're also going to sub feed this little building which has basically it's a food processing center it's got freezers and fridges and it's going to freeze dryer little mini split air conditioner and so we're going to we're going to treat this as a critical loads panel ran into a technical issue i didn't know that this house was on its own meter its own meter base separate from this so i thought we were just sub feeding this building so I have uh, talked to a few electricians and I know some people will chime in on this but uh, anyway I'm curious what you think about the different possibilities of how do you switch the neutral and two hots you do that with a three pole transfer switch or three phase transfer switch them's expensive anyway we're um, about to install the 8k we're just getting going on we had to drive five hours to get here so we showed up around 10 and uh, no no time to slack now. All right, we're gonna get our trench done. We got a service coming in here. We got a we uncovered that. I'll have to hand dig that out. And uh, we're gonna be putting the hybrid hot water solar over here. And then we're putting the solar in here. They had a machine sitting here waiting on us, so we're very happy about that. All right, we're finishing up day one. We just brought in some of the equipment here. Here's the Solark. This is a, an old house with a very old panel that we're going to connect a transfer switch to. This is a Protran Reliance um, 10 circuit transfer switch. We're going to put, we're going to mount our inverter and wiring trough and transfer switch in this area. And uh, there she is. And there's what I got to get done. So the batteries are in here. Everything is in this room. We're going to get to work. We wanted to beat the rain and so we've we've been trenching and we're gonna get our pipes and everything in and concrete in the morning for the ground mount so it'll be nice we'll have plenty of cooler drier work tomorrow if uh, if it does rain so all right I'm also in the laundry room here and with there's a water heater in this metal box I've never seen a water heater like this we're gonna put the solar hot water heating controller we're also going to talk about using the Solark smart load feature to heat water. So we'll have three ways, at least three ways to heat water in this location. There we go. We got a little more digging to do in the shade to get our conduits in here. We ended up finding all sorts of treats, water lines, old power lines, the usual. Nothing like a trencher to find all sorts of things. We are going to, we talked about the transfer switch inside we have a transfer switch on this building. We're going to feed the output of the Solark to this building and they will, they had a separate meter on here which was a surprise to me so I'm very thankful that I brought this transfer switch along and we're going to um, switch it. I was worried about the neutrals um, but I found out and they checked with the power company they are tapped on the same transformer so we're okay there according to the electrician. I'm going to trust them on it and here's we're gonna feed in and there's a panel inside mini splits freezers refrigerators and things and there we'll be able to run off the solar Abraham is working like crazy we're running our pipes not only pipes for the work we'll do this week but for the future and she can double her she can really just about triple her solar the capability is 10 kW on the solar and we're only putting in I think we're putting in 3.3.4. Right, boys? Right. Cool. 
So we'll have our solar hot water heater, just a simple top of pole mount that I've been using. You might have seen it in other videos. Again, if I can get you anything, some small, these are just great top of pole mounts for small solar applications, like with this one, heating water. And then our, our usual Schletter. You've probably seen enough of these. We didn't use an auger, and the Traco that was here had a month, big old bucket, big old bucket. So we dug the usual swimming pools, and they're filling up already. Cool. Um, we're going to, uh, yeah, come in here, and we've got three lines. We're going to basically have the one on the left is going to be the feed um, for the solar that we're building now. And then the, uh, the second line will be the home run for the future solar. And then the third one is to get over to the other array. Okay, so that's why there's three pipes in here. But for now, we're going to be running two home runs about 175 feet to the solar arc. And uh, concrete's coming in the morning. We got everything plumb, straight, square, level, and uh, ready for lots and lots of concrete. Just gonna do four yards. If you do these holes with an auger to spec, they only take three quarters of a yard. But uh, it's very hard to find an extension on an auger when you're five hours from home and. Rental companies don't have them, so we just dig them. All right, that's that's the plan. We've got to get this backfilled tomorrow, and then we can commence wiring. So, as the plan stand. All right, folks, if you have any questions, let me know. We do travel quite a ways. We don't. Um, just wanted to say, if if you want us to come help you, we uh, would love to to help you. I get a lot of inquiries about installations. So just let me know. I am not a licensed electrician, and so that is really the only limitation. I know how to hook these things up, but boy, having an electrician on site saves me a lot of hassle, time, money. So if you're interested in doing a solar project and are an electrician or have a good electrician, I'd be glad to get you a design, get all the equipment for you, ship it to you, come install it with you. You know, I'm flexible however you want to work it so all right this is the end of day one with the solar 8k installation and uh, so hopefully tomorrow we'll have the system kind of built and ready to pull wires and that will be a very good good thing we did very well today didn't we Abraham thanks to God thanks to God we do give him the thanks so uh, Okay, into day one. All right, I didn't get to shoot day two, the end of day two, so it's the beginning of day three. And we've got the system built for pulling wire. Trenches are roughly roughed in, and um, we've got a lot to do. I usually over or underestimate the amount of time it's going to take to get a job done. So we got our little disconnect pull string in for our solar hot water system. And over here will be a 12 panel Schletter ground mount. We got our junction box mounted, anchored, and our IMO disconnect. And then we will uh, we'll bring in our two strings of PV. We'll bring them straight down, down, and we'll run, uh, basically, we got to run four home runs from there, and we put an extra pipe in for a future ground mount up here. So we just stubbed it up. So we'll be, uh, we'll have, I won't have to dig up their yard again, and we can double, triple the PV, or well, we can go up to 10K with a solar arc. All right, this is what we got done the end of day two. Solark is mounted. We added all pipes for future expansion. We're we'll pulling the PV wire and um, actually the 50 amp grid input will be coming from outside the other building. You can see the other building through the window. We're feeding that, 
transfer switch, we're feeding this 10 circuit ProTran transfer switch that will service this panel. This will basically handle every one of their single pole breakers. And it has one double pole set up. We'll get our batteries down under here. We got a battery punch through here for battery cables. Everything is bushed and nice there. And then we got to do our software update before we test any loads. I got to make sure we got the latest software on the unit, hooked to Wi Fi and all that fun stuff. The comms can be the troublesome part sometimes. We'll see how it goes with the Solark. And uh, but we are running wires today. We're in the towards the end of day three. We've um, connected all the the batteries. We're using AGM batteries that were purchased from Solark. And uh, you can see the amps here. Just checking. It started off at 22 amps. All I have is grid power on, but the inverter fired up nicely. Super quiet. There's no fans. We were dumping 20 amps into the into the batteries. So. Tapering off a little bit down to 12. So I have a nice full battery. The first thing I have to do, the first thing you need to do with the Solark at this point is a software update. Make sure, and you do that out a lot with a lot of the, whether it's a Mate 3 on an Outback or what have you, you have a, to do a little firmware upgrade or software upgrade. Make sure you have the latest, greatest software before you start using your inverter. And uh, what I like, another, again, I've said this before, but it's another awesome feature. Everything's in the Solark. You don't have to have a separate remote. You have the remote. Uh, you have your uh, screen right in the inverter. So it is an all-in-one. We did want to kind of hard pipe everything. We find this to be a much neater way to install. You don't have to do any of this. It's just a nice feature to hard pipe it to some wiring troughs because you end up with a lot of wires. And with this one, with two transfer switches and the Polaris's and all the pipes and preparing for future solar addition additions and blah 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 we felt this is the way to go so she's working all right we're gonna see if we can connect to the network and do a so basically connect to the inverter and do a software update okay folks it's day four and we have gotten the Solark up and running and very pleased thus far if you can see the screen hopefully you'll be able to see the screen here we have the inverter in what is called limited home mode right now and so let me tell you quickly before things change because this clouds are going over we have a 680 watt load there's 290 watts of salt PV coming in and you see the green arrows going towards the grid it is in it is selling power to the home um, because we have uh, current sensors current transformers on line one and line two so beautiful thing about that is and I can show you through this window there's an air conditioner out there running now we couldn't put that air conditioner on the Solark in theory we don't usually run things that have 110 120 amp startup loads but the cool thing is the excess electricity the excess power from the renewable energy sources and I don't know if you can see through the window the solar is down down there we just put up you know it's a 3450 watt ground mount on a Schleder mount it's about 200 feet away from the Solark here so we have PV let me show you a few things here PV is coming up through this pipe all of that PV is coming up for one we added this one for future um, expansion there will be if she if they decide to put more solar on they can and put it here the PV disconnect is back here there's a Wi-Fi dongle back here and this is just pipe for generator or smart loads this is the grid input and this is the loads going out and these two are battery cables positive and negative negative. and so we use our wiring trough and we have one inside one outside uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the inverter itself uh, again this this inverter can be installed as a grid tie inverter without batteries you see the battery bank below me here and but we are in what is called limited home. Let me show you that. So I'm going to go into grid, grid setup here. And you'll see here this feature, limited power to home. When you have this current transformers installed correctly, the, the excess power after the loads have been satisfied, 
if there's excess renewable energy, it will sell it up into the house for the house to consume. So no PV is wasted. Every bit of it is used by the home. Really excited. So it's called limited power to home. Again, you can see the modes here, grid cell. You can set this thing up as a hybrid battery backup grid tie inverter. You can do the limited power to home. If you didn't have the CTs, well, you could just also just run the load. Maybe in an off-grid mode, you didn't have any grid. You just ran everything and you ran limited power to home. And then there's a time of use selling. They're thinking ahead having to deal with all, oh, I'm sorry for the lighting. It's not so good, is it? Come on, a little bit over here. So you have these four different modes. We're going to leave this customer in limited power to home. Okay, I'm going to go back. Escape. Love having the remote built into the inverter. No separate remotes. Very easy to use. Okay, so you can see we're about 2,700 watts of PV. Um, there's an excess, the way I read this, is about 1,800 watts going to loads that aren't even on the... Um, the critical loads of the inverter so nothing being wasted batteries at 100 percent power going to the loads and how are we using the loads so in the house we set up a 10 circuit transfer switch this pro tram and i have everything everything a through j on on the solark and if you can see through this window you might be able to we made a mess of the place, all our tools are over there. That little building has freezers and refrigerators and mini splits, and there's a transfer switch right there. We also connected the output to that. So that transfer switch is a whole house transfer switch, runs everything in that building, that's all on, and then this is on, okay? Now, she might get to the point where it's a little overloaded and you'll have to manage, but she has all the ability to manage loads. That building over there has a separate meter we were concerned about two power having two meters, but the neutrals are combined at the transformer. So once we worked through that technical issue, we were fine to send power to both buildings. All right, so this thing is quiet. Uh, it's working, working wonderfully, not throwing out hardly any heat like that. So I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, again, we. We plumbed and dug and put and built this thing to expand for future use, to put more solar on it. It could take three times the amount of solar we installed. And so when time and budget permits, we'll come back and we'll install the solar. But we don't have to tear the place up. The strings are already in the pipes. And she has a great solar window here. And we will be able to install the solar in a short time. And then at that time, We'll look into using the smart load. There's a the feature in here which turns the generator input into a smart output AC feature where you can run irrigation pumps, uh, you can run air conditioners, water heaters. But while we were here, we also put in the hybrid water heating system. It's different than Solark. There was two different products we came and installed. That's what this crazy, I don't really like using the flex, but we had to in this situation. Um, that's what we did. So I'll show you that in a little bit. That'll be separate. All right. So all this equipment was purchased directly, uh, but I will from Solark. Or no, some of it wasn't. The solar panels were not. Um, but I will put my plug in there. If you're interested in a system, please call me, email me. You'll see this on my website, practicalpreppers.com, and the information will be in the description of this video. But if you have any questions about it, uh, so far, I'm, I am just totally amazed at the simplicity of the inverter, uh, the install installation of the, the inverter. I know it's a, they've, there's a lot of thought, time, investment of a lot of energy to go into developing a product like this. So, so far, so good. Really happy with it. Uh, very tight place to, to work in in here. Very old, very old house. Um, so, but we used, we hardly used any room in this, we're in this closet. So we have the batteries, the inverter, the transfer switch, everything's in, in a very tight area, and um, which is nice. I didn't have to put charge controllers and hubs and remotes and everything else, distribution panels. This is it, folks. This is it. And um, we added the gutter because it helps with wire management and all that we wanted to do. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I know there's so many features like in most inverters. Let me show you. Let me show you that. It'll tell me the voltages, so I just hit the load button. 
So this is giving me what the solar is doing, what line one, line two are doing, what the grid's doing, the inverter, uh, the battery condition. So there are all sorts of things that you can read and make sure that your system is working correctly. So we have commissioned it, double checked with Solark that we were doing the right thing. Tom over at Solark helped us and um, we made sure that we were right. So I'm going to do the final, take the plastic cover off, unveiling of this pretty awesome 8000 watt inverter. Okay, I think that's about it. All right, so we went ahead while we were working on the solar arc, we went ahead and parallel installed a solar hot water heating controller. This is the solar water hybrid controller that you've seen on a couple of my videos. I've been doing this at my house for about six months. So we installed one for a customer and um, it's heating away, putting about 500 watts of energy into the bottom element. Again, elements are disconnected. So the element on the top is running off the grid. Element on the bottom is running off a of PV. We have 900 watts of solar on that. And uh, so I went ahead with a larger box and makes a nice heat sink for the controller. So while we were trenching and setting up solar, we said, why not throw in a hybrid water heater controller? If we can help you with that, let us know as well. So, all right, I probably have signed off 10 times. If not, this is Engineer 775 signing out.